Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Today, July 8th, it's 1029 in the morning. I'm late again. Look, I'm packing to move to another country. Y'all gonna work with me on these times. But it is my birthday eve, and I'm so excited. It's not even a milestone year, but I have like a little, I don't know, a little more oomph this year. Like, I feel like I'm on the the cusp of something. I really don't want to do a traditional podcast episode today. I'm going to. I kind of want to do another version of Rothaniel. Like, I have just a lot on my mind. It's not a milestone birthday year, but it's kind of a milestone life event year. Five years ago on my birthday, I was probably like rock bottom. I was like at the worst place that I'd ever been in my life. I'd lost a sense of direction. I'd lost a sense of self. My marriage had fallen apart. I really just wasn't happy to the point that I was depressed and, you know, wanted to die. I've been very transparent in talking about that, that time period in my life. I just remember feeling like there was nothing left for me. Five years later, I'm just like in this entirely different place and living a life that is bigger than anything I've ever dreamed of. It's not perfect. It has its ups and downs and its struggles and all of that. I wouldn't trade it with anyone or for anything. Even the adverse parts of it. I respect the journey. I'm just in a really good place for like the first time in in a long time. And some of that I attribute to, you know, we talked on a previous episode about me having personal earthquakes and being like, okay, God, like, what, what, what do you need? Let me just be obedient and see what happens. And it got easier. Like at one point it was like completely easier. It was like coasting through life with like no traffic and all green lights. It went like that for a minute. It's not that right now, but it's not, it's not that, that constant feeling of, of struggle or feeling lost. Yesterday I posted on social media and I was like, I feel like I have a testimony coming. I feel like I want to write a birthday post this year. If you're a longtime listener or reader better, when I had my website, A Bell in Brooklyn, I used to write these birthday posts every year on my birthday. And they were, you know, super transparent and just reflections on the last like year of my life and, you know, my ups and downs and, and you know, just my thought. And in general, I'm pretty transparent about a lot of things. Um, the things that I'm comfortable with y'all coming up to me in Walmart asking me about. But I would get super transparent for those posts. I feel like I'm having like a super transparent moment right now. Like I just, it is not lost on me that... Many of my big decisions as of late are directly influenced by people I've known who've done about what I'm doing. I had a friend in 2011 who up and moved to South Africa. Like one day we were just hanging out on a rooftop in in Brooklyn and she was like, yeah, like I'm planning to move to South Africa this fall. And we were just like, what? The only other person I'd heard of like up and moving to South Africa was literally Dave Chappelle when he had whatever situation was going on with him in Comedy Central and he walked away from from $50 million in the Dave Chappelle show, he went to Durban. That was my only reference point for that. And I was like, well, what are you going to go do in South Africa? And so she was like, live. Okay. She was a photographer. She is a photographer. She's still one of my friends. Uh, I haven't seen her in a while. She's also one of DeVita's friends because the circle is that small. That's the last time I saw her when DeVita came to L.A. But she upped and moved. And I was like, I've never been to South Africa, so I'd like to come visit you and see Africa. And so she was like, bet, you're welcome anytime. So she moved earlier in the year. I think she was there three or four months. And I went to see her with my then boyfriend, who eventually became my husband and then my ex-husband. But we went to South Africa to make sure Steffi was good. I think when someone you know does something, it could be moved to South Africa, it could be moved across the country, it could be buy a house, start a business, anything like that. But when someone that's accessible to you does something that's unfamiliar to you, that's, that's out of the box that you're aware of or comfortable in, it makes it more fathomable. It doesn't seem like something that's impossible, something that can never be done. So one of the reasons that I, I want to so one of the reasons that I, I want to speak about um, this, this space that I'm in and this journey that I'm going on is because I, I want the idea of getting out of your box. I wanted the idea of going from a place where you are at your lowest and people seeing possibilities beyond that. That Because of where you are doesn't mean that's where you have to always be. I'll admit to you that even as I'm sharing this, it's very difficult for me. This is something I actually have to go and write. It's so weird. Some topics I can speak about very easily. Other things, like I need to write it out. So this is one of the ones that I need to write it out. It's a birthday post. It's not going to drop on my birthday. I got to pick up my visitor from the airport 
later today. I will not be spending my birthday weekend glued to my laptop. I'm going to see some L.A. um, or wherever we end up roaming off to. So that said, we have good black news this week. Lots of good black news, in fact. Little sister Olympian Simone Biles, she is one of 17 individuals who are awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Biden. Biden said the Presidential Medal of Freedom, quote, demonstrates the power of possibilities and embodies the soul of the nation, hard work, perseverance, and faith. The recipients have overcome significant obstacles to achieve impressive accomplishments in the arts and sciences, dedicated their lives to advocating for the most vulnerable among us, and acted with bravery to drive change in their communities and across the world, while blazing trails for generations to come. So gymnast GOAT little sister Simone Biles, she has won 19 world championship gold medals. I'm sorry, and just to be clear, I like to cite my sources. I'm reading this from the page of Heather Cox Robinson. If you don't follow her on Facebook, you know how sometimes I do those um, hashtag American season finale? She does a version of that every single day, but without talking about America as if it's a scripted TV show, whatever the big news story is for the day, she recaps it and gives like great history lessons. She's also a college professor. I can't remember where off the top of my head, but she's a good read on Facebook. Heather Cox, C-O-X, Richardson. I'm sorry, I think before I said Robinson. Heather Cox Richardson. But I'm reading this on her page, so I just wanted to cite her and cite that I'm, and say that I'm quoting her. I don't want to pass off her words as my own. I had somebody do that to me recently and actually didn't piss me off. Like, I know it happens, but I was just like, bruh, if you think what I say is dope, just attribute it to me. That's all. You can say it, just attribute it. Like, I was reading and I saw so-and-so said, and I thought that was smart. And just say, there's no need for me to re-say it when somebody's already said it in a great way. I do that all the time. It takes nothing from me. But just give me attribution. But so I'm attributing this to Heather Cox Richardson. She says, of bio, she notes she's won 19 World Championship gold medals and four Olympic gold medals. Biles is also known for her advocacy for the mental health and safety of athletes, children in the foster care system, and victims of sexual assault. She's one of the Olympians that testified on, on Capitol Hill about the, um, the, uh, the gym coach who had assaulted the girls for years and nobody did anything about it. She was part of that. I think she led that. So congratulations to the GOAT. Simone Biles. This is yet another of her many, many accomplishments, which I'm sure more to come because little sis is on it. Also want to talk about the woman king. I think we talked about the trailer. There was a big film conference maybe a couple months ago and they showed the trailer there and everyone went crazy and they didn't drop the trailer on YouTube. So all I had to go by was the reaction videos of people who had seen the trailer. I found these two white guys who had reviewed it and they were going nuts. I can't remember exactly what they said, but it was like big, big accolades. Like this is the most incredible trailer that we've seen for the whole festival. Can't wait for this film to come out. And I was like, two white guys are like geeking out about Viola Davis in in a, a movie about black female warriors. Sony dropped the trailer earlier this week. It's amazing. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it, go to Google, Google the trailer. Um, For everything that we said about Viola Davis, you know, her portrayal of Michelle Obama and her book that I I didn't particularly care for the first 100 pages. It was it was a good story. Parts of it were well told. But at that first 100 pages, I was like, sis, this is much for for those criticisms that we had of Viola. And we said at the time and I said at the time, I was like, we're not giving up on Viola. But she just this is a misstep. We'll move beyond this. This is her moving beyond it. It's good. It looks so good. Viola is the leader of the Dahomey Warriors. So in Black Panther, the the woman warriors with bald heads were based on the Dahomey Warriors. So this is the story of the Dahomey Warriors with Viola Davis playing their leader. Viola Davis kicking ass or these black women kicking ass. Like I was like, oh, is this how people fought like the first time they saw Pam Greer kicking ass on screen? Like, look at this black woman in this afro just like fucking people up. I got the surge. So I'm really, really excited about this film. Did I mention the thick ass John Boyega is playing the king? I'm obsessed with John Boyega. I was obsessed with him when he got on the phone in, in London and was talking about Black Lives Matter. So I was like, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I, I like this. I like all that I see and that I hear. It's like, you look like that and you got good sense? And then he got on Regis and Kelly. They were trying to, trying to hook him up with a woman. And they said, John, which, what are you looking for in a woman? He said, a nice, a nice black girl. <laughs> Oh, is that what you like, John? Is that what you like? And then he became like my ultimate fave. I was like, I'll fight a bear for you. 
Do you remember the story about him quitting some Netflix movie? Whatever happened on set, they say they went to his room and John Boyega had checked out. All his stuff was gone. He got on a flight and left. And they were like, John, just quit the film. They went and talked to the people at Netflix, expecting them to throw John under the bus. A film is in production and, and you're the star of it and you just left. Like, it can't go on without you. A whole bunch of money has been spent and just got wasted. So they expected Netflix to be like, you know, fuck John Boyega. And they were like, you know, we look forward to a, a healthy working relationship with John and other projects and blah, blah, blah. I said, what they do to that man on the set? What they do to that man on the set that he has video and photographic evidence of? Something happened to that man. You don't, you're not just getting paid millions of dollars. Not even, not even millions of dollars. If you have agreed to do something, you are getting a check. Even if you have mental health or substance abuse problems, you don't just pack up your hotel room and check out and fly, and fly away. Literally fly away and not tell nobody. Something happened to that man. I was waiting for John to tell us what it is. It'll come out in the wash eventually. It always does. I was like, oh, John is a gangster. John don't do no disrespect. John knows who the fuck he is. I like John. You need a nice black girl by his side to support him in his ongoing endeavors. Um, how old is John Boyega? Can I talk that way about him? Is he 30? I don't like to speak reckless about people under 30. I just, I don't feel right about it. John Boyega, 1992. Woo, on the cusp. He just turned 30. I can speak recklessly about him and not feel like I need to be locked up or evaluated. But yeah, he's only in a glimpse of the trailer in The Woman King. The glimpse that we do see, very fine, very fine, very fine glimpsing. Very much so enjoyed it. What else? There was something else that was good black news. Oh, the Harveys are in Paris. I believe the Harveys are in Paris for Fashion Week. I saw that yesterday they attended the Fendi show. Marge was dressed in all white Fendi. Baby, the fabric was released. Release the fabric, she did. I can't remember the name of the hotel they're staying at. It's one of the most expensive hotels in, in Paris. They got this gorgeous suite. Marge posted this video of her coming out the bedroom. She had she on a blazer. She might have called it a dress, but it was a blazer. It covered her ass, but legs, legs, legs. Ma'am has been doing her squats, her Pilates something. Legs, legs, legs. She's like 55, 56. She has the legs of a very young woman. They're not Tina Turner legs. Nobody else has Tina Turner legs, but they're good legs. They're good quality legs. But she came out in her little blazer, her blazer mini dress. Steve was standing there waiting on her. And she walked up to him and he said, I want it. I want it. (laughs) And she said, you already got it. Flipping her little ponytail. They act like kids. They act like young people in their 20s. They act like girlfriend and boyfriend. I love them so much. They're just, they're light. They're easy. And I was like, I like light and easy. I might be able to do a situation if it's light and easy. For the last couple of days, every morning when they walk out of the hotel, someone is filming them in slow motion, capturing their outfit. And they come strutting out together. Steve was smoking a cigar when he came out the other day. And I was like, y'all, y'all, this coordinated done for the gram stunting, this, if you're going to do it for the gram, God damn it, do it. They are stunting for the gram, and I love every minute of it. I am very much tuned in and very much engaged. I love it. They posted pictures today. Marjorie was sitting at the fashion show. She got a rock on her hand. That thing goes from the base of her finger up all the way to her knuckle, to the middle of her knuckle, and she's got long fingers, too. It's a rectangular rock. It's beautiful. The way the Harvey spend money is an art form. Like, there's people with money, and they go and spend it, and it still don't look like nothing, but they spend it, and it looks like something. And they may save and invest because Steve does make a whole lot of money. Man got like 10 jobs. They making money and they spending it. The way they spend it is beautifully. It's, it's, a, it's a rare art form. And I deeply appreciate them for it. You know, I was talking about this on my Facebook page earlier today about the, their, their, their Parisian stunt. This woman said uh, she was like, girl, Margie be spending up Steve's money. And I was like, who's money? Who, who's money? Because they married, ain't they? Is it their money? Their money. Their money. They're they not single people. They're not engaged people. They are married people. Yours, mine, ours, legally. They've been married more than 10 years. If you wanted to leave, she'd take a half. Wait, where do they live? They live in LA or Georgia. I don't think Georgia's community property. But if Marjorie were to leave and Steve wrote this piece, we talked about the open letter that he wrote, I want to say in, uh, was it Good Housekeeping? He wrote an essay about Marjorie, about how much he loved that woman. One of the things that he loved most about her, he said, I think I could lose it all. And he was like, and, we, and she would help me rebuild it. That said, I'm not saying Steve and Marjorie should split. I'm not speaking any ill will over their marriage. I'm just saying if it was to happen, which I hope it does not, it's not like Marjorie would be leaving with a small chunk of change. Man worth a good 300 mil. She wouldn't leave with less than 100. She would take a third with her when she go. I'm just saying. The way Steve be out here telling everybody that Marjorie's responsible for his, his glow up, he said a million times, I would never be where I am 
in my career had it not been for Marjorie Harvey. She's going to take all the magazine quotes, all the video quotes. She's going to take all of that and be like, Your Honor, <laughs> I'd like to present exhibit A, B, C, Z, double A. Run me my money. Cut. Le check. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I'll be honest with you. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about my mind. And that's not a good thing. How we care for our minds affects how we experience life. So it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. There are plenty of ways to keep your mind sharp. And one of them is therapy, which I highly recommend for everyone. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And what I love most, how fast it is. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. That's betterhelp.com slash ratchet. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, you skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the summer sun. HelloFresh Market is a one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs with quick breakfast, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. Customize your favorite dishes with Hello Custom by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals truly tailored to you. Now, what I love most about HelloFresh, it's 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant, and it's even cheaper than grocery shopping. So that's money back in your pocket. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Ratchet16 and use code Ratchet16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Ratchet16, code Ratchet16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. In non-black... I don't know if this is considered good news. It depends on how you feel about him. Chris Cuomo is coming back. Looking at his Instagram page right now, he describes himself as a free agent. And earlier this morning, four hours ago, he posted a reel on Instagram. It's in black and white. In, in one of them, he's, uh, he's flexing his muscles, literally. In another one, he's smoking cigar. And another one, he's like he's baring his teeth at us, like he's in rage or something. In the caption that's running across these photos, it says something's coming, summer 22. I don't know what's coming. I said forever and a day, and I said it on this podcast, so you know I'm not lying. I've said that he and his brother need to do a podcast for themselves. Chris and Andrew Cuomo with the podcast would rack up and do Joe Rogan numbers. Now that said, there's whisperings about Andrew Cuomo running for office, running for mayor, I think, in New York City. So I don't know if he's going to have a podcast. Chris Cuomo, Chris Cuomo could do some Joe Rogan numbers on his own, I think. He had a huge, huge following on CNN before he was, I was about to say resigned, but let go. Before he was let go at CNN, I think he was the number one anchor. I think he was more popular than even Don and even Anderson. So I always say that he should have a podcast. I hope that's what's coming. And let me say this in fairness. Chris Cuomo, he's not always the most transparent or ethical. And he was easy on the eye. So as much as I would like him to have a podcast, I do hope there's a video portion attached to the podcast. I would not mind seeing his face across my screens. A podcast is what's coming summer 22, but I'm interested in what he has to offer. He's still my white problematic fave. He is. I know he fucked up. Grabbing the lady ass, trying trying to solicit the lady at work. He ain't shit for that. He ain't shit. I still like his commentary. I just, you know, have to acknowledge I like his commentary and he also, you know, ain't shit. Two things can be true. Speaking of ain't shit people in politics, we need to talk about our, our, our cousins over in the UK, their prime minister, Boris Johnson. I had to be corrected on, on my understanding of this. I thought he resigned as prime minister, as did many American newspapers who reported on the story. The good folks from the UK, the black Brits, 
because I wrote about this on social media and they were like, ah, 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 we need some corrections and some context here. So the UK has a different setup for their government than we do, which totally makes sense because it's a whole nother country. Boris Johnson, from my understanding, from the way I was corrected, has resigned as the head of his party, but has not resigned as prime minister. He, he did a big press conference yesterday, which in, in, in resigning as head of the party, he said something like, well, them's, them's there, the breaks. And I was like, sir, this is not a casual conversation. Like, this is a press conference where you are the prime minister of a fucking country. Like, you don't make offhand remarks and jokes at this. Like, this is big. In my head, I was like, oh, my God. Like, is this like Nixon resigning? Like, that was huge. The UK folks were like, nah, other people resigned. He's not the first. He won't be the last. So when I heard the story, I was like, well, what is he resigning over? Like, what is, what is the big scandal? I was up in the middle of the night and I was reading all these articles about Boris Johnson and his scandals. And the straw that broke the cliched camel's back was he hired this guy who he knew had a history of sexual harassment or sexual impropriety. He hired him knowing he was fucked up. And while on the job, the guy was a groper. And on the job, the guy groped two more people, two men. And that was the scandal that has pushed everything over the edge. They were like, you knew this man was, you know, a, a groper, a harasser, a deviant. He's running around grabbing people who don't want to be grabbed. I think calling you a deviant is not far-fetched. But they were like, you knew he was fucked up and you hired him anyway. This is disgraceful. On top of all your other scandals, like, we can't take anymore. Members of his cabinet started resigning. More than 50 people in parliament resigned. Like, he lost the support of his own party. Here are some other scandals. He threw parties during COVID at Downing Street. That's their version of the White House. And when people found out about it before the pictures came out, he lied and was like, that never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, that's ridiculous. And then the pictures came out and he was like, oh, I thought they were work events. That's why I attended them. Sir, sir. And doubly, it was illegal to throw events during the height of COVID when everybody was supposed to be on lockdown. They were fining people in the UK for throwing these parties. And yet... The goddamn prime minister is throwing the parties. And I was like, oh, is that, is that a scandal? Because the governor of California did that shit too. I, I was like, is that scandalous? Like enough to like, you know, bring it up in a newspaper article as a justification why somebody should quit their job? Oh, but it was because that's where I read it. I also read that during the height of Brexit, I don't know all the, the ins and outs of the details about this, but the way I saw it explained you know, on CNN he was trying to figure out something with Brexit. He asked the queen to do something that later turned out to be illegal. And then he ended up apologizing to the queen for involving her in his bullshit. That's the most scandalous I could find. He also wanted to redecorate, again, the UK's version of the White House. And he used fundraising money to do it. $280,000. And he didn't report the money. And I was like, uh, uh, is this is this like a high scandal? I said, our politicians do this shit like every day. Literally, we were talking last week or the week before about Trump. He told his base that he wanted to, to raise money to fight the election results, and they sent him something like $250 million. I think that was the number. It, wasn't, it was more than $280,000. Let, let me be conservative because I don't feel like Googling it right now, but it was a minimum of $200 million. But Trump took that money and funneled it out to other organizations that were run by his friends. Y'all talking about this man did a scandal with $280,000? So I wrote this on, um, on Instagram and I did like a recap of the biggest scandals that people are talking about. The UK folks, we do have a significant number of UK followers, but the UK followers came and they were like, yo, this is the sanitized version. Do you know that this man went to Africa? He called children pickaninnies and he talked about the, the Africans who came to see him. He said they had watermelon smiles. And I said, oh dear, oh dear, that's, that's very bad. Any of our politicians can top that easy. The current sitting governor of Virginia is in his college yearbook in blackface. Face. The number two is an accused rapist, and the number three, before they could even get to drama about him, he was like, look, I took pictures in blackface. I'm not showing them to you, but just in case y'all go look them up and find them, I did blackface too. The UK people were like, no, that's not it. There's more. He had his mistress at, at Downing Street, and she was caught giving him a blowjob. You mean like Clinton? Your, your PM got a blowjob at work? Yeah, ours too. He didn't resign over that shit. He got impeached. But then he went back to work and finished out his term. He didn't step down for that shit. They were like, this is scandalous. Is it? Somebody had to point out and they were like, look, you jaded Americans. Your system and your politicians are so corrupt and fucked up that when you hear actual scandals, you don't recognize them anymore. You're used to complete fuckery. And I was like, oh, yeah, we're, we're damaged. We're damaged. 
And then the UK folks, they were like, I just want you to also understand. I don't want you to think that he stepped down because he has some sort of morals or ethics. If that was the case, then he wouldn't have done all the dumb shit that he did. And I also don't want you to think that the people resigned because they're they're making a statement about where their morals and ethics stand. They were like, if they thought that he could be reelected, they would still stand behind him. They're only bailing on him because they don't think people will vote for him. That, that This is a power play. This is not a morality play. And I was like, that's cute. That's cute. I feel you. And I don't challenge you because I respect that you have a far better grasp of politics in your country than I do. I recognize that. I also recognize in America, they don't give a fuck. Mitch McConnell knew Trump wasn't shit. All them Republicans knew Trump wasn't shit. Nobody said anything. A little white girl got up in, in front of Congress and was talking about, yeah, Trump tried to attack the, uh, the driver because he wouldn't take him to the Capitol on January 6th. He threw a plate and I had to wipe ketchup off the walls. There was something else she said Trump did. And people were like, oh, you're a hero. No, she sat up in the midst of that shit, the whole administration, and never said anything until he's out of office for almost two years. Tons of people did that. After, after Trump was out of office, they were like, life in the White House was crazy. It was chaotic. It was terrible. It was the, it was the craziest thing that I'd ever seen or done. But you sat up in that shit. You, you collected the check, didn't you? So the UK folks are like, oh, they abandoned him because they didn't think he could be reelected. And this is a power play. Yeah, yeah. Our, our people, our, our conservatives, they, they more gangster than that. But the note about how America is so fucked up and we all have PTSD that we don't recognize scandal and we see it. When the black Brits started chiming in with the additional scandals, I was thinking about like you described African people as watermelon smiles and called their children pickaninnies. And this doesn't even really raise an eyebrow to me. Our president referred to African countries as, as shitholes. Our current president, I, I like Biden way more than I like Trump. You go back far enough and, and Joe's commentary is starting to look a little shaky too. Even Joe on the campaign trail, like Joe was talking about, remember the random tangent he went on about going to the pool, like being a lifeguard in his like either teens or 20s and how like the black kids would come up and like rub his blonde leg hair. And I was like, nigga, what are you talking about? That, like white people of a certain age, and by a certain age, I mean like over 30, you can't really go back more than 10, 15 years before like shit they stay and start to get real sketchy. Like what? That's racist. But we so used to that shit, it barely raises the eyebrow anymore. We are fucked up. We are really fucked up. Politicians are resigning over shit that's just like, I called it a 40 degree day in Baltimore when I wrote about it. <laughs> Half the Baltimore people got it. It's a wire reference. The Stringer Bell was explaining he was like, it go down to 30. People start complaining about how cold it is. He says 50. They damn near getting the grill out. But he was like 40 degrees. Basically, nobody pays attention to a 40 degree day. It's just average. It's just regular. Like, it's nothing to write home about. The Baltimore people who didn't watch The Wire were like, what the ba why Baltimore got to get dragged into this? And I was like, I could see how y'all could find that problematic because Baltimore does have not any more corruption than, than any other city. It's just Baltimore shit just been on blast for a minute. I wasn't calling y'all out Baltimore. I wasn't singling you out. I was really just making a wire reference. That's all. But yeah, I was like, we need help. We need help. Bad. People were like, yeah, because of Trump, everything went downhill. And I was like, Trump wasn't the one that got caught getting head in the Oval. People were really bringing that up as like part of Boris's scandal. And they were like, he has a, a hairdresser that's pregnant in Canada, allegedly. And I was like, you know, it, was, she, was she a minor? Was it consensual sex? <laughs> Why else are y'all bringing this up? I mean, because right now we have a sitting congressman who's facing sex trafficking, minor sex trafficking charges. And I still think something was going on with him and that boy, Matt Gates. I still think something was going on in that Dominican child that was living in his house. His ex-girlfriend's younger brother. He got a big sister at the very least. Why he with you? Why he not with her? That story's never made sense. Investigate that while y'all looking at that sex trafficking. Shit. Never get tired of a good whodunit? Then you'll love June's journey. You play as June Parker, an amateur detective on a quest to solve the murder of her sister and uncover her family's many secrets. You'll need to find objects that are devilishly hidden in intricate scenes full of little details and before the timer runs out. Whether you're craving a good mystery or just need to get away for a while, June's journey is the perfect game for you. Sit back, relax, and let your inner Sherlock escape to the glamorous Roaring Twenties. You'll search for hidden clues to solve mystery after mystery across thousands of vivid scenes. And with new chapters every week, there's always a new case waiting to be cracked. 
Now, I love June's journey. I can't put it down and neither can 30 million other people. Find your inner detective. Download June's journey today. Available on Android and iOS mobile devices, as well as on PC through Facebook games. Saying goodbye to high interest credit card debt is one of the first steps toward financial independence. But the interest month after month can feel like you're in a never ending hamster wheel. That's where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score. So rather than looking at your credit alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. And what I love most about Upstart is how fast it is. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 and without impacting your credit score. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash ratchet. That's upstart.com slash ratchet to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash ratchet. Last but not least, I want to talk about this um, this ongoing situation with Brittany Griner. She is a WNBA star. I'm sure you're familiar with this story. It's It's been a little bit of everywhere lately, and we've talked about it on here back when she first was detained. Back in February. I think the story didn't come out for a couple weeks, though. But February 17th, and I'm reading this on CBS Sports, she was detained by the Russian Federal Customs Service after they said they found vape cartridges containing the marijuana concentrate hashish oil. So essentially she had a vape pen and she has been charged with quote, large scale transportation of drugs an offense that can carry a sentence of up to 10 years behind bars in Russia. That sounds crazy to us. Our, our laws, our rules are not um, the same as laws and rules in other places. And I know in Bali, like weed, which we think of as, is the equivalent of smoking a cigarette. Well, actually, we probably think more negatively of smoking a cigarette than we think of smoking weed in America right now. But the possession of marijuana is punishable by death in Bali. Same in Singapore. When I, when I went from Bali to Singapore, when we were on the plane. They made an announcement that if you have any illegal substances on you, and they, they went through a list of, of what is considered illegal substances, including chewing gum. They were like, just leave it on the plane. It won't be reported. Nothing will happen to you. But do not, under any circumstances, take it into Singapore. Because, again, even small amounts of, of, of illegal substances, even for medical use or with a medical card, it is not legal. Your ass can be executed in Singapore over it. So that's part of the situation that Griner is dealing with in Russia. Although... I was reading something the other day, and I cannot remember where. But they were pointing out that, that Griner is being harshly charged. They were talking about another woman who was in Russia who had two grams of marijuana. She spent 10 days in jail, and, and she was sent home. So they were like, they're excessively charging Brittany Griner. I don't necessarily think it's because she's a black woman, per se, for Russia. For on Russia's end, I don't think they're doing it because she's a black woman. I think this is a case of like, she's an American and she's just famous enough where it will antagonize the administration. I don't know. I don't really necessarily think it's because from Russia's end that they're holding her because she's black. For us, I think I think her being black is part of the reason nobody went to get her ass already. But before I go into more details, I want to talk about this heartbreaking letter because I mentioned it on last week's episode. We didn't get a chance to get to it. But Garner wrote this uh, heartbreaking letter to President Biden and her representatives released it to the media on Monday, 4th of July. The first time I read it, I cried. It's just, it's. (sighs) She said, please don't forget about me. (laughs) Oh, I don't know if you can hear my hand moving back and forth. I'm sitting here fanning my face trying to stop crying. She wrote to Biden. It was a handwritten letter. And it says, quote, as I sit here in a Russian prison. Alone with my thoughts, 
And without the protection of my wife, family, friends, Olympic jersey, or any accomplishments, I'm terrified I might be here forever. On the 4th of July, our family normally honors the service of those who fought for our freedom, including my father, who was a Vietnam War veteran. It hurts thinking about how I usually celebrate this day because freedom means something completely different to me this year. Oh, God, I'm not going to make it. <sighs> Hold on. She says, I realize you are dealing with so much, but please don't forget about me and the other American detainees. Please do all you can to bring us home. I voted for the first time in 2020, and I voted for you. Sis, you didn't, you didn't vote for Obama? How old is she? She's old enough to vote for Obama, wasn't she? We'll get back to that. She said, I believe in you. I still have so much good to do with my freedom that you can help restore. I miss my wife. I miss my family. I miss my teammates. It kills me to know they are suffering so much right now. I am grateful for whatever you can do at this moment to get me home. Oh, God. Oh, this poor woman. Oh, this poor woman. Her family... I don't know this lady. I don't even watch WNBA. I think I have maybe heard her name in passing. Before this happened, you could have shown me a picture of her. I might have been able to identify her as a WNBA player if it was, it was head to toe because she's really tall. But I wouldn't have been able to tell you her name. I have no real emotional connection to this woman other than her being another black woman. And because I bounce around the world, I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. My dad told me when I went to college, you got to pick one. You can either do drugs or you can do liquor. But you can't do both because you get too fucked up. Man, I was like duly noted. I'm just going to go with, at the time it was vodka. That was his drink too. But just as like a black woman bopping around the world, I know that like anything's possible. By the grace of God, nothing has happened to me. I got pulled over driving when I was in Panama. And that's when I really knew. I was like, shit, I can speak some Spanish. Usually when, I, when people ask me if I can speak Spanish, I'd be like, yeah, I can do enough to get by. But that could have gone a whole nother way. Like I was driving and it wasn't dark yet. And it was, it's a car I'm not used to. And also in my truck, I have my lights on automatic, so they just go on. I don't really think about it. But I was driving at dusk, and I hadn't turned my lights on, and a, and a cop pulled me over. And I was like, la luces? <laughs> but that's the only way that I relate to her. And you see, I can't even read the letter without crying. I would be on my knees bawling if I was her family. I just brokenhearted. So the White House has acknowledged that they received the letter. President Biden called Griner's wife, Sherelle. She's been doing interviews lately to bring more attention to, um, to Britney's case. Because, again, it's been like five months. I, th I think at first there was the idea of not to make too big a deal about it because it would give Russia more leverage. But it's been five months. So Griner's wife has started doing interviews. She did, a, she did an interview with Abby. I didn't see the interview, but I saw Abby posting about the sit down. You know, I don't even remember Abby's last name anymore. Abby from CNN. She's just one name to me now. She's just Abby. That's amazing. I need to go. I need to go watch Abby's interview. This CBS story references that Griner's wife sat down with CBS Mornings on Tuesday. She said then it had been very disheartening that she hadn't heard from the president yet. And so after that, when the interview ran, Biden called her. Biden called her specifically, and this is a, a statement that the White House made. They said that the president called Sherelle to assure her that he's working to secure Britney's release as soon as possible. He offered support to Sherelle and Brittany's family, and he committed to ensuring they are provided with all possible assistance while his administration pursues every avenue to bring Brittany home. I don't, I don't know what to make of that. One of the things that I've read about this story is that Russian authorities want to, want to exchange Griner for a prisoner swap. There's a convicted arms dealer that we have, Victor Bout. He's currently serving a 25-year sentence. Russia has offered to return Brittany. Talk about these people like their property. But they've offered to return Brittany in exchange for this arms dealer, which, you know, an arms dealer in exchange for somebody that had a vape pen? I do understand the administration's reluctance there. But also just as like, a, like black woman to black woman. And I mean black woman is in Griner. I mean black woman is in her wife. I mean black woman is in her mama. Bring her ass home. Just bring her ass home. Just bring her ass home. Don't leave that lady over there. At the same time that I'm saying swapping, doing a prisoner swap for somebody who had a vape pen and she just pled guilty, which I read a whole bunch of stories about how that's a strategy. And, and because of the way the Russian legal system is set up, she might have been punished more harshly 
If she tried to plead not guilty, the case had to be further drawn out. They would punish her for drawing the case out. And there's not really a question as to whether or not she had the vape pen. She did say when she pled guilty that she didn't have um, intent to be guilty. It kind of sounded like I think she forgot the pen was in there, which girl. But in the same way that a prisoner swap for a vape pen versus somebody who was an arms dealer, it's not even in the same ballpark. So I get why there could be hesitancy, be like, you want me to give you an arms dealer for somebody that had a vape pen? But also at the same time, I'm like, you can't leave an American in Russian prison for 10 years over a fucking vape pen. Should she have had it? No. A potential 10 years in Russian jail for a vape pen? That's, it's too much. It's too much. You got to get her home. Give him the arms dealer. Just give him. It's such a sad story. And, and I just, I feel awful, awful, awful for her, for her, for her family. I, I couldn't even read the letter without crying. In that sense, the letter did exactly what it's supposed to do. And I could sit here and dissect it. I mean, I've, I've told you a bunch of times, my, my actual degree is in English language, writing and rhetoric, my undergrad. I could sit here and break down all the forms of rhetoric logically and literally. I could do that for you to tell you why the whole thing's effective. It hits right in the ethos. Please don't leave me over here. Please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Please don't abandon me. The fear of being abandoned, the fear of being left, the fear of being discarded, the fear of being forgotten is a very human, across the board, everybody, human fear. And she tapped into it very, very well. I think a lot of people had just sort of forgotten about the story. There's so much crazy shit that happens in America every day that like we're just constantly bombarded with fuckery. I don't think her story and her name were at the forefront. Not even I think, I know. People weren't talking about Brittany Griner last week in the same way that they're talking about her this week. Here and there, somebody would mention her. But back to being a headline in news stories and, and, and a thousand word pieces written on a news site, that wasn't happening last week. The, the letter did exactly what it's supposed to do. Bring her ass home. I also just read, I was looking up something else on Griner, and I saw that Macy Gray had gone on the Today Show. They banned her and her performers from wearing free Britney Griner t-shirts. Macy's in her own mini scandal right now. She just did an interview where she said something like transgender women are not women and it's, you know, pushed people over the edge. I'm not touching that one. And also a lot of people are supporting her. But I'm actually surprised given that she's in the middle of a controversy that she performed on the Today Show. Morning TV is notoriously conservative. But I'm reading here on the New York Post. It says NBC's Today Show purportedly, like allegedly, Blocked a member of Macy Gray's band from wearing a free Britney Griner t-shirt during a live performance this week to protest the WNBA star's incarceration in Russia. That makes no sense. She's doing a performance to protest Griner's incarceration, but the band member can't wear a shirt that says free Britney Griner? That's the whole purpose of the event. Gray's keyboardist, Billy West, was spotted wearing a t-shirt emblazoned with the slogan ahead of the group's performance on Thursday's edition of Today. However, the message was nowhere to be found once Gray's act got underway, with West later confirming he was told not to display it. He told TMZ, quote, they made me turn it inside out. They said I couldn't wear it. Macy Gray also did an interview with TMZ. She also addressed the drama over the T-shirt. She said, quote, it really bummed me out. We wanted to wear them on the show, and they said no, because I guess something happened. She added, quote, I don't think it's too political. It's a human being that's in a really horrible situation. And that's people that have power to do something about it. That's what they should do. The New York Post says today representatives did not immediately receive return a request for comment. Free Britney. And just so I make sure that I'm that I'm getting Macy's quote about transgender women right, because I don't want to misquote her or make it seem like she said something that she didn't. She went on the Piers Morgan show and she did an interview And she said of trans women, she said, quote, just because you go change your parts doesn't make you a woman. On the Today Show, she she did try to clean up her remarks. She said, quote, it was a huge learning experience. She added, I think it takes a lot of courage to be yourself, to go out in the world and be honest about who you are. And so I think anyone who is in the LGBT community is a hero and sets an example for all of us. She added, I said some things that didn't go over well, but my intention was never to hurt anybody. I feel bad that I did hurt some people. Is that an apology? Doesn't sound like an apology. Maybe she's not apologizing. Maybe she meant what she said. She just didn't mean to hurt anybody. I don't know. So that is the episode for this week. We will speak again next week. I'll have an episode on Tuesday. I will not have an episode on Friday. 
If you have not picked up your Ratchet and Respectable merchandise, literally the store is closing. It will not be open after Sunday. So if you want Ratchet and Respectable merchandise, literally now is your last chance to pick it up. There is also a code if you would like 10% off of your merchandise. Going to Ghana is the code. Just type it in and it's 10% off all purchases on the site. This is the last time that I'm going to give you a plug about purchasing merch. At least for a while. If not a few months, a year. That's not everything, but that's that's what we got. I'm going to go edit this and get it up. Because I just got an email from production like, hey, when is it coming? It's coming as soon as I finish taping. Okay, talk soon. Have a great weekend. Bye.